Sahlan, let ya marhaba. Inshallah, we're going to take you for an exclusive tour of the University of Medina. And this footage is brought to you exclusively by Rose Hat Islam. So, how was your journey, Ak? Alhamdulillah. I'm just going to go around, see where the students and knowledge, where they do it at. Inshallah. These buildings over here are some of the buildings where the Tullah, the students, are living. And even this one on your right hand side. Each building has about maybe five floors, and on every floor, I don't know how many students there are. But over here, you've got the um, place where you can wash your clothes, just over there. You can get it washed, get it ironed, further down. The Maksil. So, do you, have to, do you have to share rooms? Yeah, yeah the, in each room, depending on uh, which building that you're in, the older, build, the older the building, the more people to a room. The newer the building, the least amount of people to a room. Why, the, why is that? Just the way they set it up. The older building is six people to a room. Imagine that. In one room, a big room, there's six people in that room. The newer building, where we're going to see with Abdul Hakim, there's only two people to a room. So how do you find that? Do you find it hard? Because obviously, people from different countries, they've got different cultures and different habits. Yeah. So do you find it difficult to deal with? Or? Definitely, man. With, with um, problems with regards to um, the Mokayev, the air conditioning. Yeah. You know, sometimes somebody might want the air conditioning on, you might want it off. And it can, be, it can become problematic, but if you've got good roommates, alhamdulillah, you're okay. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Let's walk. This is one of the mata'ams, the restaurants that you can, um, you can eat in. This one you have to pay money for. The other mata'ams down there, um, the students can eat there for free. Oh, so sure like so this, is, this is like a restaurant you have to pay to eat in this one and the yeah. other one up there is, is free? No. Oh, What's the different levels of food like? <laughs> I like this place, man. You can get chicken rice, you can get shawarma, you can get um, chicken and chips. It varies, isn't it? What you pay for, what you get is what you pay for. So, so in, the, the, in the free food, like? food, what's that like? Well, it's not free. At the beginning when you come, it's free. Because you're a new student, yeah. they give you they give you vouchers. You're able to eat for free. But when you come here now, obviously now the, the, prices, the, the prices vary. But you also see the um, varieties of food, they also vary as well. So yeah. it's a bit, the quality is a bit more better. Basically, this is the here. So when, if like a new student comes, this is where he would have to come to get all this paperwork filled in, you know, like his registration and he comes when he comes to get his, his student card and any any of the affairs that, is, that needs to be sorted out for the new students, they need to come here. Do you find it quite efficient when, when you came? Um, Alhamdulillah, because there were other brothers that preceded us in the journey. Alhamdulillah, things, they were, it was a bit easy, but... Did you have things, any difficulties? No doubt, they, they no doubt there's difficulties, no doubt there's difficulties, but alhamdulillah, you know, like, with every, everything that you do here, there's, there's, there's difficulties, are, difficulties are going to come from it, but alhamdulillah, you know, this is um, the Sharia, the faculty of Sharia, so once a person, like, for instance, a foreign student, he comes from the West and he's unable to speak Arabic, and he completes his, two, his first two years in the Ma'ad um, Ta'alim al lugha that is basically an institute for the learning of the Arabic language. After he completes his first two years, then he will move on to whichever faculty that he's interested in. Whether it be Qulyat al-Shari'a, Qulyat al-Da'wa, Qulyat al-Hadith, Qulyat al-Qur'an al-Kareem. There are many, many Qulyat that a person can choose from, you know, once completing his two years in the um, Institute of Arabic. So you, have to, so you have to complete basically two years and then you come off of this side and then you pick like what direction you'd like Basically, to after, after, when you finish with your two years, then you can choose whichever, whichever one of the Qulliyat that you want to go into. And this is, alhamdulillah, this is like one of the most popular in the Qulliyat. But it don't, it don't have to be two years in the Maha. You might go and they might say, okay, you're, 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 you're Arabic strong enough to go into a Mustafa Thalif. And you might only have to complete one year. What's that? Uh, level number three. Oh, you have cool. four levels, level one, two, three or four. Alhamdulillah, masjid's over there. So what is that? That's the masjid for um, all the students? Yeah, basically this is the, the masjid for the jam, yeah, with most of the students. This, um, they attend here. Well, how, many, how, many, how many masjids are there? Just one? There's, well, this is the main, this is the main masjid. There are, there are other little, like, like for instance, the Qulit al-Sharia, they have, a, they have a, like a, a Muslim masjid in there. But this is the actual masjid for the Jama. So, so when there's Jummah, is everyone, Jum'ah, everyone yeah, when, 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 when it's Yom al-Jum'ah, the Salah, 
Okay, now we're at the Ma'had for Ta'lim al al Arabiya. This is where the new students that need to go through the Arabic um, language process go to study from 7.30 in the morning to 12.30, mashallah. This is Kulit al Hadith al Sharif, where they specialize in hadith and sciences of hadith. As long as you can hear this is the Adhan from Salat al Maghrib. Right now, we're on our way to um, the building, al wahda al thani This is the building that I'm staying in. When I first came to the Jamia, they put me in al wahda al ula which is right here. And in al wahda al ula the first building, um, there's six people to a room. Okay, so you're in a room with six other people, five other people, and there's no partition. So what I tried to do was um, I went to this imada here, and I tried to, you know, complain and say, listen, I can't have six people to a room, I've got valuables with me. And um, they said, listen, go to all the other uh, buildings here, and if you can find a spare room, we'll give it to you, no problem. So alhamdulillah, after about three or four days, I managed to find a room in al wahda al-Thani, where we're going now. And that's a bit better, there's four people to a room, and each person's section is partitioned off, mashallah. So I've got my own little section, and I'm going to take you there now, inshallah. This is um, the building, al wahda al thani the second building. And this is the, um, the room I was telling you about. This room here has four people to a room. And as you can see, all of the rooms are partitioned off. This is one room here. This is another room here. And we've got another section. Another section here. And another section here. MashaAllah. You know? It's got the potential to be very cozy. But, I thought that. Bismillah. Ahlan wa sahlan. This is my quarters right here, mashallah. I've got a nice little setup. I've got my bed, I've got my desk, my computer, mashallah. A few books that um, a few brothers helped me get the other day. And I've got my internet as well. So, mashallah, it's got, it's got the potential to be very comfortable. You know, chat to my family, surf the net if I need to surf the net for anything. And then I've got my clothes, everything that I need here, mashallah. You know? And if you've got good roommates in your room, and it makes the whole experience of being in a room with four other people that much more easier and enjoyable, mashallah. So right now, how many people are you sharing with? Four people. Sorry, four three people. people. Four including myself. It's four together. Okay. Right now, we're just leaving the older apartments, mashallah. And we're going to make our way over to Hollywood. Look over there, so where the newer buildings are, um, are placed. And in the newer buildings, there are uh, uh, at least there the rooms. Basically, the rooms it consists of. Does anyone want a drink? Yeah. No, I'll give me a drink. Right, go on, you get me a drink. Right. Carry on that. Basically, the rooms in the new building they consist of two people to a room. So we should it will be you. Like for instance, me, I live in this new building here. It's called Thani at Ashar. I live in there with one more person, another brother. So, alhamdulillah, you know, it's much more cleaner than the older, and obviously it's newer than the older building as well. Alhamdulillah, we we'll take a trip and clean up. Assalamu alaikum, ahlu wa sahlam. This is my room. Alhamdulillah, I'm in the new building where there's two people that share to a room. I like the other, the other buildings, some of the older buildings. There's only two people. Alhamdulillah. This is my side here. Uh, this is my table and uh, my laptop. So I don't need to talk to family or anything like that. It's, you know, it's easy for me. These are my, my books and whatnot. These are some of the books that I'm studying. The Ma'ad, the Ali You know, so most of the time, this is where I would do revision and most of the stuff. You know, Alhamdulillah. So you got your wardrobe there. No. Uh, AC and the last. 
this side here, this is the, this is the Muhammad Ali, room. this is his side. Alhamdulillah, this is the kitchen. They don't have to pull up on their day to day. When they finish their studies, they can come and they cook their lunch, dinner, whatever they want to cook, whatever it is. This is where it goes down. Basically, this is the, the washroom for everyone, you know, to pull up. Everyone has, each has their own washing machine. You know, and then everyone starts their thing in there, clean your clothes in there. Yeah, we are buses. After every, after every, uh, Salat al Asr, they take the Tawab to the Haram, the Masjid al Nabawi. And then after Isha, they pick us up again and they bring us back to the Jam. And this is on a daily basis. Why? What, why do they do this every day? It's just a form of transport for the students, isn't it? And it's free as well, so alhamdulillah, you know. So Aki, what's the procedures of how the um, people have to enroll in the university and what? Basically, from what I done, I came here for Ramadan. And basically, you have to, I came from England, you have to have an application form. So you fill in the application, it's better that it's done in Arabic. So you have, if, you, if you're unable to speak Arabic, you get someone that will be able to help you with that. And then you, you, fit, you fill in that, and then you have you have to have two letters of recommendation from like Islamic society or anything, or from your, your local masjid, two letters or and another masjid. So basically, it's a letter of recommendation, you know, just with a brief about who you are um, and whatnot, and to say that yeah, we know this person, and you know, mashallah, we we give him recommendation to say that yeah, he's a good student and whatnot. And um, you also need to have around 10 pictures or something like that, 10 photos. Um, what else? Just have like your birth certificate. And yeah, also you have to have a qualification that has been done within like the last five years. So if whether, whether it be GCSEs or whether it be like a college certificate or something, just to show that, okay, this person is indulged in... Um, like he's been involved in education like within the last five years. So and then that, then, like that's really like well, no, that's most of the things that you need. And then, like, any like any other little qualifications, any like little certificates just to say yeah. Maybe you've done like a short course, maybe in Arabic or or any kind of Islamic studies in your masjid, something like this. And, and all of that kind of stuff is good, you know, as well. So what, what, what about if you ain't got GCSEs or stuff? You can you still get in? Is it? No, you can, it you can still get in. You can still get in without that. You can still get in. But um, maybe you might have to go through the second, like the secondary school, like it's called Thernawiya. So maybe you might have to go through that. That 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 can be anything to like one year to three years, the duration of that. But um, you can still get in. It's not just bam. You haven't got the. Qualification, so that's it. So, how do you find out what you to the uni? Well, basically, who comes out, you might find out in around like around May, May to June time. May to June time. Like, some students, or like some other people, they they might post something on the internet. So basically, say, yeah, we've got the name. These are the names for the accepted students for this year for the Islamic University of Medina and so forth. So, they put students post it on the internet? Yeah, people, as soon as, soon as they find out, like, that's how I found out. So they usually don't directly contact you? They send them, they send the acceptance letter to your house. But for that, the names, they, the names they come up on the list. The names they come up on the list that someone posted on the internet. Like, when, I, when I heard that I got in, it was a brother that called me and said, Masha Allah, I got into the jam. To try and apply, when you get here, you come to this building here, and you come here, and then basically you have the interview. You'll be assessed by one of the one of the people that work there. It's better if you know someone that they're able to translate for you. Or if you, you don't know anyone, inshallah, you can come here and you meet some of the students, someone that will be able to speak English, and then they'll come. They'll be able to assist you with that. So you come here, you have basically you'll be assessed by one of the people that work here, and they'll ask you like minor questions like. They might ask you to recite some Quran. They might ask you like a few questions, like maybe like what is shirk, you know, and just minor questions. It's not really an session to say what, whether this person is going to be 
accepted or not. It's just, it's just basic. It's just general, you know. What are they trying to see roughly? Like, what kind of direction yeah, you're coming where from? You, where you're coming from, you know. What kind of understanding you have? But it doesn't actually determine whether to say that yeah, this person he gets in or not. But it's just like it's general, basically. So after the assessment, what happens then? After that assessment, class, that's it. So what you do now? Depending on when, you basically have to wait for a year now. A year afterwards, yeah, even depend, after you've been accepted. Depend, depending on no, no, no. Depending on when you applied, then you have to wait for a year for the previous year now to say okay. When this year starts now, then you'll see whether your name has come up. Yeah. So if your name has come up as one of the accepted students, then there's another procedure that you have to go through from then. And what's but that? Basic, basically, it's a year that you have to know, you have to wait, and you'll know whether you are accepted or not. Okay. Just a pull up. students of the, um, the Jamiat al Islamiyah, they can come and play football, basketball, even if you come closer, you can see straight down there they've got like some, like a bar. You see some of the students on like a Thursday night, Friday night, they start doing some workouts, pull-ups, chin-ups and stuff like that. Um, the, this, this place is generally open all the time, but you find that Thursday night, Friday night is where it's packed out. All this area here, where you can see the gravel, you see some of the brothers from all different countries playing football, you might have you know, a basketball match playing, also a football match. You see these people, the chairs around the side of the court, people playing, just um, spectating. So it's a very, very, very nice vibe, you know. We've also got a gym, which is outside of campus, and inshallah ta'ala, I'll take you there later on. So bro, so when, when um, on Thursday nights, so all the brothers are mixing together? Everyone's mixing together, people from different cultures, people from different countries, all coming together, speaking one language, mashallah, which is the Arabic. And um, it's fun, it's fun, it's a nice way after that hectic week studying Arabic and whatever kulia you're in, just to, you know, release and just, you know, let your hair down. Kind of. The day in the life of uh, Afal ibn a Jamia, student in the University of um, Islamia. Um, basically, Fajr comes in now about 5 o'clock, quarter past 5, so your day really starts from there. 5 o'clock in the morning, you get up, you know, you perform your, your wobble and you head down to the masjid, which is just over there, mashallah. After you've prayed um, the, the Salah and Jama'at, many students, they stay in the masjid until um, the rise of the sun. And they spend their time with different types of ibadat, you know, reading Quran, maybe studying Arabic, doing some memorization. And then after that, uh, wait for the sun to rise, approximately 10-15 minutes after that, and then they pray the two rakats um, to obtain the rewards of, you know, doing Hajj or Umrah with the Prophet ﷺ. After that, if you... Um, have a mota'am ticket, a restaurant ticket, you can make your way, this is about maybe six o'clock now, make your way to the mota'am um, and eat your breakfast. You know, you might spend half an hour in the mota'am eating. After that, it's about half past six, go back to your room, go and have a shower, get ready for the, the day's work. Uh, the rasa starts, studies start at 7.30 in the morning. So by the time you get to lesson, you've eaten, you know, you've already, you're, you're not half asleep, you're already awake because you've been up since Fajr. And then, you, you know, you start the lesson, mashallah. It's from 7.30 to 12.30. Once you finish the rasa, you know, you're going to be quite tired. You might, um, the, the rasa stops at the adhan of Salat al-Dhuhr. After Salat al-Dhuhr, after you've prayed in the masjid, then you can either go back to your room, catch up on some sleep from Asr dhuhr to Asr, or you can just stay in your room or do whatever you want. Generally, what the students recommend that you do is between Dhuhr and Asr, which is the hottest time of the day, you get asleep because you need the rest for later on, if, whether you want to go to the gym, whether you want to study or do whatever. Salat al-Asr, now this is your time to revise the notes that you've taken earlier that day or to do anything you want. When I came to the Jamia, all of the brothers were advising me, you know, get a schedule, get a schedule, get a schedule. It's imperative for your development in the Jamia. So, if you were somebody that did want to make a schedule after Asr, would be a good time up until Salat al Isha to concentrate on Quran. If you're in the Mahad, going over your notes for the Arabic language, and that, in a nutshell, is the day in the life of a Talib over and over and over again. You know, some brothers they choose after Salat al Isha, which is about 7:30, they go to the gym and just you know have a little workout just to cool off and relax. Alhamdulillah. Uh, my name is uh, Ismail Mohammed Noor. Uh, I'm Somali originally and I grew up in Sweden. 
Uh, I've been studying in the Jamia for about uh, three, four years now, alhamdulillah. Uh, and uh, since the beginning, the very beginning, I've been benefiting. Uh, and what comes to mind is uh, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, uh, Man yuridi Allahu bihi khayran yufaqqihu fi al-deen. Whoever Allah wants khayr for, he makes him comprehend the religion. And the ulama, the scholars, they all, all, uh, they also, also said that uh, Bil uh, the contrary is true too, that uh, if a person, if Allah does not want good for a person, then he makes him not understand the religion. So by coming to Medina, the Prophet city, there's a very good chance for a person to learn Islamic in an authentic, uh, in an authentic way, uh, taken from the scholars and from the hadith of the Prophet <laughs> I'm uh, your brother Tariq Muhammad Hassan. I'm from uh, Holland and I'm uh, studying now uh, for the third year in uh, Kuwait al Hadith. And uh, I'd just like to tell you that it's a big name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are studying here in this, uh, this university, it's, 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 it's uh, the Islamic University in uh, Medina. And we have, uh, we have learned very much, alhamdulillah, we have learned uh, very much of the Lugh al Arabiya the Arabic language, I've memorized much of the Quran, alhamdulillah. We, all we have uh, benefited very much of the, the, the Jami Islamiyya. Uh, and so we hope that uh, also the other uh, people and the brothers, inshallah, will come of other countries, so that they also will benefit of this uh, beautiful Jami. And also the teachers, we have learned from them very much things, the good akhlaq, and do our best in school, and things like that, and have very uh, high, uh, we say that, high, uh, I uh, stand it. Stand this. Zakallah Barakallah. I hope that the brothers, inshallah, also in the other countries, do their best to come here to study so that they will go back and they will learn the people and the meaning of La ilaha illallah. And, the, 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 and that's important. Assalamu ala Rasulullah. My name is Abdul Rafi and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, which is in the United States of America. Uh, I'm a student here at the Jamia, Jamia to Islamia, which is in Medina. I'm a second year student in the Mahai. And after this year, inshallah, if Allah wills, I will enter into the one of the colleges, inshallah. Um, in regards to my uh, my time here, I would no doubt say that it is a very beneficial um, environment. Uh, I've benefited tremendously. Um, I literally came here with no Arabic background or Islamic studies. And alhamdulillah, with the blessing of uh, Allah, I've excelled tremendously. Uh, the environment is a very good Islamic environment. Uh, the, the studies are very good. The programs, the lessons, and uh, the teachers are also very good. And uh, in general, I would say this is, this is a very uh, good environment to study if one intends to study. Uh, well, I would firstly advise the people to have a good intention and, uh, and to be patient because it's a new environment. It's different as opposed to us uh, foreigners coming from the West. So uh, one should exercise a lot of patience, a lot of diligence, and, and, uh, and uh, focus. <laughs> and that's all I can say. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Uh, my name is Hanif. I come from Cardiff. I'm a student in Jamiat al Islamiyah. This is my second year in the Arabic Institute. And, uh, Alhamdulillah, since I've come here, I've learned a lot of, of Arabic. I met a lot of good brothers from all over the world. And, Alhamdulillah, it's, uh, it's a big ni'mah to be here. You know, in, in regards to the environment, you, know, you can pray in the, the Masjid al Nabawi, you can uh, benefit from the ulama. So, I mean, Alhamdulillah, it's, it's a big ni'mah from Allah. Azawajal. Uh, all your brothers out there, you should apply and do your best to come to the Jamia, inshallah. I mean, this year, only three out of ten brothers came from the UK. So, I mean, if you have the desire to come here, and, yeah, and you have the means, then apply, inshallah, and uh, Allah make it easy for all of us. My name is Salim, I'm from America. Uh, basically, the Jamia has done wonders for me. I've been here maybe, this is about a, going on a year and a half now, and I've learned maybe. 20 times what I've, I've benefited, maybe 20 times from what I've known now and from what I knew then. Uh, the Prophet sallam, he says, Whoever Allah wants good for, he gives him an understanding of religion. 
And Olai, the Jamia is one of the best places for you to get a gain an understanding of, of your religion. Uh, the flip side of that is that whoever Allah doesn't want good for, He doesn't give them understanding of their religion. So try to gain understanding of their religion and go to places like Damaj or Kuwait is some of the best places to learn your religion. But I think the Jamia is, uh, is top some on that list. So inshallah, you see this and you apply it. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of the new, um, Islamic University of Medina. Inshallah, those that are interested in seeking knowledge, this will be a good place for you to start, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.